God, that would hurt like a bitch, that burn. Father-in-law's in the ICU. Cautiously optimistic is the report. I don't. I don't even know how to write this thing up. Where to begin? Well, like anything, I guess. You know, start at the start, and work your way to the end. Okay. okay then. You're gonna be okay. I'm gonna take Peggy Blumquist back to Minnesota. <clears throat> Anyone's got a problem with that. After the week I've had, they can <laughs> keep it to themselves. Yay! Oh, God. My aunt lost her bosom to cancer. Said it felt like somebody took a hot poker and put it through her heart. Not yet. You know, sometimes you get a peach from the bowl and one side is ripe and yellow and the other is black and moldy. That's the only way I can think to describe it. <sighs> Camus says, Knowing we're gonna die makes life absurd. Well, I don't know who that is. Hmm? But I'm guessing he doesn't have a six-year-old girl. Mm. Nobody with any sense would say something that foolish. We're put on this earth to do a job. And each of us gets the time we get to do it. <laughs> and when this life is over, and you stand in front of the Lord, well, you tried telling him it was all some French <laughs> joke. Is there any chance I could be tried federal? I thought, well, maybe I could serve my time in California. There was this news report on the TV. I was there at the end, you know, after the war when Saigon fell. But then this Chinook comes, and those things, well, you can't just land one on a ship this size. But the pilot's got his whole family inside. So he hovers over the deck. People start jumping, scared or not, onto the ship. There's a baby, and the mother just, just drops him. And one of my boys, like catching a ball. And I'm thinking, how the heck is this pilot, right? How's he gonna get out? But he maneuvers off the port bow, and he hovers there for the longest time doing you know, what we learn later, uh, 
taken off his flight suit. And somehow he rolls the bird on its side, and just before it hits the water, he jumps. 6,000 pounds. An angry helicopter parts flying all around him. That's how he makes it. How'd he do that? What are you seeing? You might make it, Peggy. Your husband. He said he was going to protect his family no matter what. And I acted like I didn't understand, but I do. I just wanted to be someone, not be defined by someone else's expert. Because I'm a victim, too. Was a victim first, before him. Victim of what? You wouldn't understand. You're a man. Mm -hmm. It's a lie, OK? <clears throat> That you can do it all. Be a wife and a mother and this self made career woman. Like there's 37 hours in a day. And then when you can't, they say it's you. You're faulty. Like. Like. Like you're inferior somehow. And. Uh, like, like if you could just get your act together. Mm. Until you're half mad. People are dead, Peggy. The operator didn't know where you were. What happened? Well, it's... She's fine. Just had a... Well, she fell is all. Something about the pills I gave her. So what do you mean she fell? Where's Molly? She's here. Tell Betsy I'll be home as soon as I can. Okie dokie. Uh, and Noreen. Thank you. Oh, oh. Ta, Hansi. And so, great empires fall and are forgotten. You're thinking. Whoa. then was conquered by the Romans, and then by the Spanish, and then by the Turks. You know... You see where I'm going. I yeah, get it. I need a face, man. His details are inside. Do I take it you'll try to get revenge on Kansas City? Apprehend those responsible? You can bet Kansas City will be heavily guarded. Not apprehend. Dead. Don't care, heavily guarded. Don't care into the sea. Kill and be killed. Guys from season one from Fargo. I had doubts, but uh, you really brought this thing home. I had a few breaks. Don't do that. Take praise and turn it into something else. I worked hard night and day to get this done. I don't mind telling you. It's uh, nine to five mostly, but management rewards initiatives. So uh, nights, weekends, whatever gets the job done. You'll be working closely with the uh, accounting department, looking for ways to optimize revenue. See. I thought, well, in the old days, when a guy conquered a place... You want the old days? Go work in a coal mine. This is the future. The sooner you realize there's only one business left in the world, the money business, just ones and zeros, better off you're going to be. You play golf? Golf? 
It's a great game. You should learn. It's where all the girls are on these days. You wouldn't be allowed on fucking course. It's part of how they kept black people out, is it was white only on the golf course and the country clubs. Anywhere you can make a deal. I don't think this is a very good win for Mike. <laughs> Kind of perfect though. <laughs> oh, careful, careful, careful. Could you, could you, could you no, no. This is just the medicine I need. So, uh, you're gonna put that in your report then? What? Gunfight interrupted by a spacecraft? No. And this Hansi fella? Uh, me the FBI's most wanted. First one of those I worked. But so far, nothing. Probably fled the border. You okay, huh? Yeah, sure. It's just a cramp. We're set lunch, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Next thing, a little be grouching about his sciatica. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're sitting here together. That's what matters. Man once said, "You'll know the angels when they come, because they'll have the faces of your children." Anyway, <laughs> um, oh. just happy to see you, all. So, Dad, I fed your cats while you were in the hospital. Tell us about the room. I went in your office. Isn't that the root of it? Conflict, war, does, doesn't it all come down to, to language? Uh... A, un, a universal language of symbols, because pictures, to my mind, are, are, are clearer than words. You're making your own language. Well, it sounds crazy when you say it out loud, I know. But you're a good man. Yes, he is. Well, I don't know about that, but I like to think I got good intentions. <sighs> what do you say tomorrow we go fishing? Okay. <laughs> we'll get some sleep, you. Good night, Mr. Salverson. Good night, Mrs. Salverson. And all the ships at sea. <laughs> amazing and it ended so gently it's like a lullaby it's left me feeling quietly happy that was a really nice way of rounding that off I approve I think one of the things that has been great about the last probably the last 10 years of television in particular is that we've given up on happy endings or you know people can die at any time I think Lost was was actually fairly pivotal in, in the development of that and also Game of Thrones as a contemporary show. It's not a foregone conclusion that the goodies win and the baddies don't. And that has really refreshed television because of those other shows. This happy ending was not a foregone conclusion, and it's bittersweet because we know ultimately Betsy will die, 
obviously Hank will die. But we also know that Molly is going to grow up surrounded by people who love her. She's going to become an in- like a compassionate, capable, phenomenal woman. She's going to have an amazing family. Lou's going to see all of that happen for his daughter. And it's so nice because actually I do actually really like a happy ending, but I but knowing it's not inevitable for me is what makes a great happy ending. Like you you don't see oh, it's a surprise. I'm surprised they could have taken that anywhere. I was really really glad to get the confirmation of of Hansi's parentage. That apple did not fall far from the tree. I mean, he was really Otto's true heir. Because Otto would have done that. As we know, we've had him to that and we've seen Otto was utterly ruthless. And that's what we saw from Hansi. But he's still alive. Out there. So, like, even the bad guy didn't die. Ultimately, he he's out there somewhere in the world. I love the Betsy's dream sequence, the idea that she actually saw everything that was the future of their family. And it also worked as a kind of kind of a teaser for the audience, like for us, was that is that happy ending still gonna happen? Did it ever happen? Which was quite cleverly done. It was great to see Molly again and Gus and older Lou and oh I really love that family. I don't know if they're going to be able to be around somehow in season three. I'm guessing we're going off to a whole other story maybe with no continuity but I hope we have something like some little because obviously this season did you know, feed into it. Season one fed into season two because we had Sue Falls established in season one. And I'm just wondering what from season, from this season, if anything, was setting up season three. I know it's got Carrie Coon in it and I'm all about that. I'm so ready. I just really did think this was brilliantly told. And it's a reminder to me of how a series works versus a season and part of the reason I watched season two was that one season one I thought aside from the literal ending the the last several episodes of that were fantastic there was enough in season one to tell me that I know that it's possible for these people to make phenomenal episodes so even though the season as a whole hasn't held together particularly well for me, I thought, but what I know is they can make great episodes of television, which means they can probably make a great season of television. The other reason I watched is that I have seen several shows. In fact, that's what's strange about the shows that I've been... So the shows I've been reacting to, I've become attached to almost immediately, like from the first or second episode... The Leftovers was like that. The Handmaid's Tale was like that. They just got me immediately. But actually, when I'm watching television, that's actually rare. It would it just so happened that those those two series were magical from from the like almost from the first minute. Generally, even Game of Game of Thrones, like two shows that are my favourite shows, are Lost and Game of Thrones. They are my favourite shows ever. Breaking Bad is like nestled underneath them in fact i could include breaking bad in this breaking bad when i first watched it me and my wife watched four episodes and we were just like i don't understand why this was recommended to us i'm really not feeling it we stopped it was like two or three years before we went back and gave it another go by the end of season one we quite liked it by the end of season two we loved it and by the end of the whole thing at that time it was my favorite show I, I was like this is the best show on television and it, it absolutely was I should explain it. I watched Lost later even though Lost aired earlier I'll tell you why now 
so Breaking Bad, a show that goes on to become, in my view, at that time, the single greatest series of television ever made. And it took me several years to even complete a season. But then it, you know, it connected. And now when I watch season one, I'm not bored. So it's not, it's something about settling into the kind of unique rhythm of the show. And I, I am starting to suspect that, that sometimes really great shows have a pace, a rhythm, a universe so unique that you can't just slide into it. It's like you have to get inside of it. Same with Lost. I, wa I watched Lost when it aired. I watched, I think, just up to the beginning of season three and then I lost it. and was just like, this is fucking ridiculous. For my entire life since that point, I use Lost as like a cautionary tale for television. Something that started off absolutely fantastic and then just became utterly ridiculous and stupid. Flash forward over a decade, American Mum, one of my favourite reactors, starts reacting to Lost. And I was like, oh, I'm not missing out on months of mum reactions. I'll just try Lost. Watch season one, brilliant. Watch season two, brilliant. Got to season three, thinking, oh, it's all going to go downhill. It was amazing. Season four was even better. Season five was even better than that. And season six was just phenomenal. And I love the ending of Lost. I can never understand why people don't like it. I honestly wonder sometimes if they're confused. Because people still say to me, I won't spoil it, but watch it. I I was absolutely complete. So, again, you know, that was in my mind when I was feeling about that with season one with Fargo was, did, am I as mad at Fargo in season one as I was last season three? But the reason that's relevant is because it, that's, that's what's happening with Fargo and that's how a show works versus how a season works is that a show isn't a season. That season is just one part of the wider narrative and you don't really know what that season means until you've watched the whole thing. And that's why I had to watch on because it was like, there is no way that someone could watch Lost season one or Game of Thrones season one or Breaking Bad season one and actually know what the show was about. You, you've had a story, there are the characters in the show, but ultimately the story is so much bigger than that little window of season one. And I am now really, really fucking excited about this show. Because they are taking on the themes, you know, this whole family business versus corporation, the change from a world where what you value is value versus i mean our world really where value is just it doesn't mean anything anymore it's money ones and zeros as the chap said and that's the goal literally you know houses are not built as well roads are not built as well furniture is full apart shitty stuff rather than like built to last because why would you build furniture to last because then nobody else would buy more furniture so the idea of built in obsolescence that your phone is built to die so that you buy in a, all of this the sort of the negative elements of consumer society that that it's touching on i think is absolutely fantastic the acting is phenomenal the cinematography is some of the most distinct I've seen in time. Like, it really is peculiar to this show. The comedy was absolutely Coen Brothers through and through. It was phenomenal. And, they, and it was all hanging on characters that were compelling, fascinating, funny, and in their own way sympathetic. I don't think I truly hated 
anyone apart from Ben Schmidt and that guy, the South Dakota State Police Captain. <laughs> I think that's it. And Dodd. But I didn't hate Hansi. I hated him for a moment when he killed Mark Gerhardt, but that was it. And I was absolutely ended up rooting for Peggy and Ed. I'm gutted Ed died. But I actually think Peggy will be better off. And I actually think he got that. I'm really glad that he got to say that before he died, that if we make it out of here, we're, you know, we're not, I don't think we're going to make it. He really was able to say to her, I love you, but we're not meant to be together because for you, this is wrong. And for me, all I want is this. And all he wanted was for the lives to go back to exactly how they were before everything happened. That was what, the stuff that was happening was wrong for Ed. For Peggy, it was a massive opportunity. She, it was like her emancipation. Even though she might end up in jail, the irony. But Fanta, what a well-drawn characters. It would have been so easy to make those two-dimensional, like, so easy, and they were not. Oh, that is an important theme that is with us now. Not just here, but around the world. Patriarchy. And patriarchy does hurt men. But it's not designed to. <laughs> Mike Milligan didn't get a happy ending. And that really was, I think, a wonderful metaphor. Almost for, like, people transitioning from the family business economy of America into the corporate world is that you're not a king like in reality mike had a much more exciting free more dangerous existence now he's gonna sit in a box and look at paperwork it's gonna be dull as fuck and he's losing all his individuality get rid of the shirts and pinstripes screw the hair it's conformity ultimately it's just beautifully done and our family, our centre family survived and we know they go on to survive. Not everybody gets to survive because we all die. But what everything that's beautiful about that family survives. And that's a fine way to end a season. This has left me feeling really complete. Really complete. I loved it. I can't wait for season three. And I just really want to thank everyone for watching along with me. You guys are fantastic. I love all of your comments. Those of you who have become supporters on Patreon to help support the channel, it means the world to me that you would actually hand over your harder money and say, you know, we really want to keep your videos coming. So we're happy to, to donate to that. It's just amazing. So I have nothing more to say right now. I'm so happy with how this season went and I cannot wait to start season three. Until the next time, bye-bye.